Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today I'll show you how to generate maps using Dungeon Alchemist and then import those maps into Roll20, including dynamic lighting information. Note that in order for this to work, you will need a Dungeon Alchemist license, link down in the description, and a Roll20 Pro account. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So about a year ago, Dungeon Alchemist showed up on Kickstarter, and it promised that it was going to be this amazing software program that would allow you to build maps for tabletop role-playing games in just moments. And these maps would be incredibly detailed, automatically have the doors and the walls in all the right places, and it really just sounded almost too good to be true. So I backed it, and I've been using the beta of Dungeon Alchemist for several months now, and I absolutely love it. It has made it so much easier to build maps for my D&D games. A lot of times, if I need a map for a side quest, something that isn't part of a module that I'm running, I'll go and I'll comb through Reddit or something like that to try and find one that suits what I've got in my head. But the problem is, you can't always find exactly what you're looking for. And if your players suddenly jump down a direction that you weren't expecting, you may not have 15, 20, 30 minutes to comb through subreddits to try and find an image that suits what they want to do. Dungeon Alchemist will actually allow you to build rooms and areas really, really fast and then load them into Roll20. So what I'm going to do today is give you a very brief tour of Dungeon Alchemist and show you how to build a map and load it into Roll20. So here I am inside Dungeon Alchemist, and the first thing that I want to do is make sure that I have this button over here, this Draw Room button selected. That's what allows me to actually build rooms on the map. And then here in this column we can see all the different categories that we have to choose from when we're building rooms. So we can build rooms that are from an alchemist laboratory, rooms that are from crypts, rooms that are from taverns. And so basically what you do is you select the category and then you choose what type of room you want from within that category. So I'm going to go with the dissection room from the alchemist's lab. Then what I'm going to do is come on to this grid here and I'm going to just click and drag on the grid until I've highlighted the appropriate area, basically how big I want the room to be, and then I'm going to let go of the mouse button. And Dungeon Alchemist prompts me, does this look good? If it is, we click the check mark. If not, we can delete and start over again by clicking that X. So I'm just going to select this area here and then click the check. And now Dungeon Alchemist is going to build that room for me. And there you go, you see it just built that whole room and it populated it with objects. So let's change our perspective a little bit here. I'm going to click on this tool in the top, and that raises the walls, gives me a more 3D perspective, but then I can also see this view as well, and let's keep it like that, and let's just zoom in a little bit. And I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in. Look at the level of detail that we have here. These chests, the tables for dissection and examination, the alchemist's workbench over here, you can see there's a mortar and pestle on the, the bench. There are candles that are actually glowing. We've got stairs that are going up. We've got pots. We've got a coffin. This is a really detailed map that just took a couple of seconds to be built. Doing this by hand, forget it. I wouldn't have been able to do it. I'm not a good enough artist to do something like this. So this is just really awesome. And that's just one room. So let's let's build on this, right? Let's switch back. I'm going to go back to the overview here. And then I'm going to add a laboratory. And I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and drag. That's going to let me pan, just like Roll20 does. Okay, now, pay attention right here. You'll notice there are windows in this room looking out on the right side of the, the wall here. So what I'm going to do is draw another room, a laboratory, adjacent to that dissection room. And watch what happens to those windows when I click the check mark. All right, so we're building the room again, and the windows got removed. So Dungeon Alchemist was smart enough to say, hey, you don't want windows looking from room to room, you want a door. And that's what it did. If we go back to the 3D perspective here, we've actually removed the window and turned it into a door. And again, the detail here is just fantastic. If we look over here, we can see there's this book on this work table. We've got another Alchemist station here. If I scroll down a little bit, we've got some other equipment, another glowing workbench down the bottom, this giant brass tank. This is really amazing. And the torch, you can see, is flickering, which is 
really cool, and that will actually become a light source in Roll20 for dynamic lighting. So that's going to be really cool as well. Let's just keep going here. Right? I'm going to go back to the overview, and I'm going to zoom out, and I'm just going to draw two more rooms real quick. I'm going to put on a library, and I'm just going to put that right here. And then I'm also going to put on a storage room, which I will put right here. And I'm just going to make that a little on the smaller side. There we go. Okay. And now again, you can see that we switched out the windows for doors. We're in the appropriate places. And we've got all these uh, new rooms populated with the appropriate types of objects. So start to finish, this only took me, what, maybe a, a minute or two to build this. That's absolutely amazing. Now this is great. We could just take this map right as it is and load it into Roll20. But Dungeon Alchemist also gives you the ability to further tweak and tailor these maps to be exactly what you want them to. So we can change the layout of rooms, we can change the objects within those rooms, we can add things, take things away, change the floor style, change the door style, change the window style, you name it. You can really get very granular in terms of the detail you can put into these maps. So let's take a look at how we do some of that right now. So with our basic floor plan built, what I'm going to do is go back to the toolbar and I'm going to click on this place objects button. And what that does is it shifts the menu from the room building interface into the object placement interface. And when you have place objects selected, we can actually go into a room. I'm going to zoom in on the dissection area here and we can actually click on the individual items within the room and we can do things like move them around we can rotate them we can scale them to make them bigger or smaller we can look at the items that are sitting on top of this table i'm going to zoom in even further and i can remove this rib cage individually i can move this skull around i can make the skull bigger and now it's an ogre's skull sitting on top of this dissection table and that's going to freak my players out so you can come in here and you can really make the environment your own but that's just moving things that dungeon alchemist natively placed you can of course put your own things down here so let's say i don't like this table at all i can just delete it now it's gone maybe i want to put this sarcophagus in instead so I'm going to click on that, and then I can just place the sarcophagus wherever I'd like. Drop it down there, and again, we can rotate it, we can make it bigger, or smaller, or whatever. This is the coffin of an evil halfling necromancer, something like that. There it is. It is now halfling size. So just like with all of the rooms, there are different categories for your objects. So you pick whichever one of those you're interested in. Let's do furniture. And then you've got a whole bunch of sub choices within that. So maybe I want to put a mirror in this laboratory. Maybe this is a magical portal kind of mirror. Well, I've got these choices for my mirrors. I like this one. I'm just going to click on that, drag it out. And then using my scroll wheel, I can rotate it to wherever I want it to face and then just drop it down. And now that's been placed. We can do the same thing with, say, magical symbols. So here we've got a dryad in a pot. Let's put that down here as well. And so that's going to enable us to do some really cool things within the room. All right. And again, I'm going to zoom out here and I can move things around even further if I want. I can pull this coffin over here. I can zoom in and let's change the perspective a little bit. If you press and hold your scroll wheel down, you can actually spin the room and rotate it from a different angle. And this is really nice because you can really get a good perspective of how everything looks in the room. And I just love the way this is. This is just fantastic. I'm going to show just a couple of other things here. Um, we can place doors. So if you want to put a door into a particular room or into a particular place, we can do that. So like if we if we look at our map right now, I switch to the top here. I don't have a really a way in from the outside. So maybe I want to put a door right here to get my, my players inside. I can choose my door style. I wanted to use this arch, place it over the wall. And there we go. Now we have that arch and our players can walk into the room from there. Maybe I don't want this window right here. I can just click on that window or door. Delete it, 
and Dungeon Alchemist replaces it with a wall. So you have the ability to really tailor this as much as you want. You can even select individual walls and change them if you want to. Maybe you don't want to like, I don't like this floor. I don't like this kind of wood pattern here. I, I prefer the kind of the tile look. What I can do is click on the place floor tiles option here. And I'm going to go with maybe the, uh, let's do this kind of black marble. I think that looks good for a laboratory. I'm just going to click that, click the floor. And now I can change it. And I can just keep dragging and select the entire area. It'll replace the whole thing like so. And there we go. Now we've got the entire room redone in black marble. Very, very cool. And I think that suits this room a lot better than the, the wood floor that was there before. So as you can see, very easy to make tweaks. I didn't have to move all those objects out of the way. I didn't have to do anything like that. It just automatically updated the area with what I selected. A couple more things real quick. Let's switch back to the top down view here and I'll zoom out. I'm going to go back to the draw room button here. Uh, if we click on remove rooms, I can select an area of a room to remove. I can delete just this chunk and then Dungeon Alchemist will redraw the room without that area. There you go. You can see it you put in a new wall for me. Uh, or I can edit a room and I can, again, click on the entire room. Like if I wanted to get rid of the laboratory completely, I could just click on that entire room and then I could trash it. I could click refresh, which would change all of the objects within. Let's actually do that. I'm going to click refresh and it switches everything, puts in a new pattern and so on. Um, or we could edit the room shape, click this, and maybe we want to uh, make it a little bit wider just down here in this one section. And now it will just kick out that one little spot. And there we go. We've made the room a little bit bigger. So really it's very flexible in terms of how you can manipulate the rooms and the objects within once they're done. Honestly though, I don't really like what I just did. So I'm just going to undo that uh, a few times to get back to the bigger room that I had originally. And you see here, we can undo those things and everything goes back right the way it was. One more quick tip before I show how we export this out to Roll20. You see the just the level of detail, and I, obviously I'm getting very excited about it, but if we go zoom in here, and then again use the scroll wheel to spin around and get a different perspective on the room, this is just gorgeous, you know, looking at the room like this, and, and I want my players to be able to appreciate this level of detail. So what we can do is actually take a screenshot of this, and then use that as a handout in Roll20 to show the players exactly what it looks like. So I'm just using the Windows built-in uh, screen grab tool here, and I'm just gonna take a, you know, a screenshot of this area right here so that they can see exactly what it looks like. That's gonna get copied to my clipboard, and then I can move that into Roll20 as a handout. Okay, so all this is, is done now. I'm, I'm happy with this map. So let's zoom out here. I'm going to go file. I'm going to save and we'll call this the alchemists dungeon. Click save. And now what I want to do is export it. And we're going to say that we're going to do a roll 20 export and our perspective. We want to keep it as 3d walls. I like it like that. We're going to say render lights in image and export to virtual tabletop. That's what we want to do because that's what will allow us to export the image with the dynamic lighting features already enabled. We won't need to draw lights on the map. We won't need to draw walls or doors or any of that. It's just going to be taken care of for us automatically. And then our image quality, I'm going to leave it at 150, but you can go really high or lower. Um, I think this is fine as is. And I'm just going to say export. Now, when it exports, it's going to give you this text file, alchemistdungeon.txt. We're going to save that, and there we go. Now, we've exported. Okay, so what we're going to do next is flip over to Roll20, and we'll load the map in. So here I am in Roll20, and the first thing I want to do is go into my game settings screen, and I'm going to go into the script library, and I want to make sure that I've installed the Dungeon Alchemist importer. So I'm going to select that, add that to my game, because that's what's going to allow us to pull in all of the dynamic lighting information associated with the map. Okay, so we've got that in there. Here's my game screen. I'm on a brand new page. What I want to do now is load my map 
onto the map layer. And it's very important, this map has to go on the map layer in order for the Dungeon Alchemist importer script to work. Okay, so I've just uploaded my map onto the map layer, and I'm not gonna resize it or anything like that. The script's gonna do all that for me. So once that's done, what I'm gonna do is open up that text file that got generated. So I'm just gonna double click that open, and here it is. And I'm gonna just copy the whole thing. I'm just gonna say Control A and Control C to copy everything. We'll go into our chat window here, and I'm just gonna paste that into the chat and then press enter. And that has, as you can see, successfully imported the map data. Now let's go back into our page for a second and let's look at our page settings. And what I'm gonna do is turn on dynamic lighting for the map, click save settings, and let's jump to the dynamic lighting layer. And there we go. All of our walls are in place, all of our windows, all of our doors are there. And all of our light sources have been brought in as well. If you look, there are these circles around all of the torches and candles and the brazier, and these are shedding light in a five foot radius. So if I double click on this, I can see that this is emitting light. I can make it brighter if I want to, but by default, it's included all of the light from my light sources in addition to the walls. And that is a huge time savings because now we don't need to go in and draw all of our light too. So there you have it. That's how you can build a map using Dungeon Alchemist and then import it into Roll20 with all of the dynamic lighting features already done for you. Dungeon Alchemist has quickly become my favorite program to use in conjunction with Roll20. The team did a fantastic job building it, and I think that if you want to build maps really quickly and get them into your games, this is a great tool for you to check it out. So, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.